In this video, we want to talk about how the root test and the ratio test are related to the geometric series. In other words, we want to take a closer look at these two tests and show that they don't actually just come out of left field and have no relationship to anything else, but that they're intimately related to something that we know a lot about. So, if we have the geometric series here in front of us, then we can see whether that converges by simply knowing whether r is less than 1, or more exactly, if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So let's see how that relates to the root test. So if I have this series here, and I want to use the root test to test whether it converges, then I just take the nth root of the nth element of the sequence a n, and see if it's less than or equal to r for some r that's less than 1. And again, to be totally correct, we actually need some absolute value signs here which actually means that we're doing an even stronger test, namely whether this is absolutely convergent. But details aside, we want to now see what this has to do with the geometric series. What could this possibly here have to do with this up here? Well, if I raise this to the nth power, and I raise this to the nth power, then I end up with this that the absolute value of the nth element of the series is less than or equal to r to the n. In other words, each one of these here is less than or equal to each one of these here. And since, as we've written here, r, or bef before, I mean before we added this to, uh, or raised that to the power, we knew r is less than 1, so since we know that r is less than 1, then we know that this converges up here, right? This geometric series converges. And this, these elements here that we're adding together are always smaller than what these elements would be, or, or at the most as big as they are. So with the comparison test, that is, if we can just compare each one of these elements and see that uh, each one of these is at most as big as these, then we see that this series must also converge. Now there's the small detail that you can't take the zeroth root of something so you would be starting at 1 or maybe at some later higher number which we'll just call n. As long as it's the case for all n greater than or equal to some starting number then this test works. So that's just a detail. The thing to understand is that this root test is just telling us that these elements here that we're adding together are less than or equal to each one of these and since this converges this must also converge okay so that's the root test now let's look at the ratio test again we have some sequence like this and the ratio test tells us that if neighboring elements have a ratio, again, less than or equal to r, for some r that's less than 1, then this converges. But again, to be totally correct, we're actually testing for absolute convergence, and we need these absolute value signs. Again, just a detail. So what does this have to do with the geometric series? So let's write out the geometric series in a slightly different way. And let's use the ratio test here and see what we get. So, testing the ratio between these two elements, r3 over r, or r to the third over r squared, of course, gives us an r. Similarly, the ratio of r squared to r1 is, of course, again, r. So that's the common ratio between each one of these elements. Also, probably the reason why 
the letter of the alphabet R is used often for the geometric series because it's simply a ratio. Sometimes you might see it written as a Q, which just stands for quotient, which is just basically another word for ratio. So if you think about it that way, the geometric series has to do with ratios, and this is just the ratio test. So if we have, let's say, this series, 1 plus 1 third plus 1 ninth plus 1 twenty seventh plus maybe 1 eighty first, etc. We recognize this as a version of the geometric series where the ratio is always 1 third. And since this ratio is less than 1, this will converge. So all the ratio test is telling us is that if we had a series like this, let's say we had 1 and 1 third, and here let's say we didn't have 1 ninth, let's say we had 1 twelfth, and here we didn't have a twelfth, we had maybe a 36, or instead of a 27th, and here let's say we had a 1 one one hundred eightieth. So would this converge? Well we see that this ratio here is indeed one-third. This ratio is one-fourth, right? Three over twelve. And this ratio is again one-third. And this ratio is even one-fifth. But they all have in common, each one of these, is that it's well, let's just say it this way, that each one of these is less than or equal to one-third. So the ratio test just tells us that if we have something that looks like the geometric series, but that we're even allowed to sometimes make the ratio be less, then it will still converge, which shouldn't surprise us. Because again, we're just adding something slightly smaller than we otherwise would have. And since this one converges, then this one converges as well. And again, the small detail, this would not have to be the case starting at zero. It could also be the case just starting at some big n. So, that is how you can see that the root test and the ratio test are actually just versions of the same thing we know about the geometric series.